So in this example problem here, we're given a uh, frame uh, where we have a, a rigid body ABC or a, mem a, 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 a beam ABC that is supported by uh, a link that goes from point A to point, for, sorry, from point C to point D uh, that has pins at both ends. Okay. So what we're going to ask is we're asked to determine what is the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment. So what is the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment at point B? All right. That's what we're looking for in this problem. All right. So to determine those internal forces, the well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a free body diagram of ABC. All right. So the first thing, so so uh, at member, so for member ABC, all right, we have uh, our at point A we have a pin. So for a pin joint, we know that we have two forces. We'll have A of X and we'll have A of Y. All right. Then we have our um, distributed load that goes across our surface. All right, so our distributed load that goes all the way along our beam, we know that's equal to 50 pound feet. All right, and then we have uh, at point C, we have a uh, uh, we have the reaction force due to the pin at point C. Now, at point C, there's no external loads that are being applied to point C, so the only two forces at, uh, acting on member CD are going to be the internal force are going to be the reaction forces at point C and at point D. So point so member CD is a two force member. All right. So therefore we know that the force within CD all right we is going to go along the axis of CD. All right. And we know based off the dimensions in the problem that this would go along a, uh, a eight uh, foot by a six foot triangle, which is uh, has a hypotenuse of ten feet. All right, so we can use those dimensions to break FCD into its x and y components. Okay, so what we can do here is we know for a distributed load we can find the concentrated equivalent load all right and we know that the concentrated equivalent will act at the centroid of the distributed load uh, so in that case uh, the concentrated load will act at four feet from point B uh, from point A it will act at point B right. so so to find the concentrated load you know the concentrated load is equal to the area under the uh, the distributed load diagram. So that's going to be equal to W times the length of our beam. So in this case, it would be equal to uh, 50 pounds per foot times 8 feet, which is going to be equal to 400 pounds. All right. So in order to solve this problem, we need to determine either A of X, we, we can either determine A of X and A of Y, or we can determine what is the magnitude of force CD. All right. So to do that, what we can do is we can sum our moments about point A and set that equal to zero. All right. So if we do that, we would end up getting minus 400 pounds times four feet uh, plus the moment caused by force CD which would be equal to six over ten six feet over ten feet times the magnitude of FCD 
times the length from point A to point C, which is going to be 8 feet. Right. So if we arra rearrange this and we solve for FCD, you get FCD is going to be equal to uh, 10 over 6 times uh, 400 pounds times 4 feet divided by 8 feet. Alright, so if we do all that, we end up getting uh, FDC is equal to 333.33 pounds or 1,000 pounds, 1,000 over 3 pounds. Alright, so, <coughs> all right. so we can, so now we have FCD. Uh, we can go to the second step of our problem. All right, so for our second step of our problem, we're going to look at the right-hand side of uh, of our uh, section cut. All right, so we're going to take a section cut at point at point B. So we do that. What we'll end up getting. All right, is we'll get, uh, so we'll get, uh, we know we have a distributed load. All right, uh, of 50 pounds per foot. All right, we have a, uh, applied force FBC. That's equal to a thousand pounds over three. All right, we know that that's applied at uh, is applied at a six, eight, ten triangle. Uh, we know that we have at point B here. We have um, this should be FCD. Sorry, not FBC. All right. And we know at point B, we'll have three internal forces. We'll have the normal force NB, we'll have the shear force VB, and we'll have our moment MB. Okay, so, <clears throat> so again, all right, what we have to do is we have to determine our equivalent force Or a concentrated force and its location, right? Right. So to do that, we know that X of C will be in the center of our uh, distributed load, or at the centroid of our distributed load. So in the case of a square or a rectangle, it's just going to be ha equal to half the length. So length over two. In this case, the length of our of our beam is just going to be equal to four feet. So we know that this is just going to be equal to two feet here. All right. And then we know to find the concentrated force, we know that it's just equal to the area under the curve. So in this case, it's just going to be equal to 50 pounds per foot times, uh, what the heck is it? Uh, four feet. So it's going to be equal to 200 pounds. All right. So the <clears throat> so once we have that information, uh, we now know all of our applied forces acting on the system. So the only thing left to do here is we have to apply our equilibrium equations. Right, and we're doing that so we can find uh, N of B, V of B, and M of B. Right. So to find, so the first thing we'll do is we'll sum all of our forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero. 
So if we do that, we have minus NB. All right, and then the only force we have in the x direction would be equal to uh, plus uh, 8 over 10 times FCD, which is equal to 1,000 pounds over 3. Uh, and there's no other forces in the x direction. So if we rearrange this, what we'll end up getting is we'll get NB is going to be equal to uh, is 80 over 80, 800 over 3, which is basically uh, 267 pounds. Right. So we can do the same for, uh, we can sum all the forces in the y direction, and set that equal to 0. If we do that, we would get. Uh, v of B minus the concentrated force, which is 200 pounds, plus 6 over 10 times FBC, which is equal to 1,000 pounds over 3. All right, if we rearrange that, what we'll end up getting is we'll get V of B. It's going to be equal to 200 pounds minus uh, 2,000 over, over minus 200. Pounds, so that's actually going to be equal to zero. All right. All right, and then the last one is we have to sum our moments. Oops. And so that equal to zero. So we know that we have uh, minus mb at uh, at uh, point uh, B. And then we have the two moments that are ca caused by our two applied forces. So our concentrated force will create a negative moment. Uh, so it'd be the concentrated force is 200 pounds times the length of two feet. All right, and then the FC, the Y component of FCD, which is equal to six over 10 times 1,000 over three pounds, um, would get uh, ch -ch -ch, uh, times four feet. All right, and so if we rearrange and we solve for MB, all right, what we end up getting is we get 4,000 pound feet minus 2,000 pound feet. Oops, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, you would get uh, 100, 200 times 4, eight, minus 800 pound feet. I'm sorry, this should be 400. Oops. This is 400 pound feet minus 80, 800 pound feet. Ah, uh, terrible. All right, sorry. Let me start this all over here. All right, so this would be equal to M of B would be equal to minus 400 pound feet plus 800 pound feet. All right, so M of B is just equal to 400 pound feet. All right, so that's so. If we recap this problem here, we are asked to determine the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment at point B. So in order to do that, we first had to draw a free body diagram of of ABC, and we had to solve for either A of X and A of Y, or we could solve for FCD. All right, so we chose to solve for FCD uh, using the moment about point A. Uh, so we did that we found FCD. All right. Once we had FCD, what we could then do is we took our section cut of, the, of our member through uh, point B. All right. and we isolated the right-hand side of the section cut, um, which revealed our internal surface at point B, which had our three internal forces, NB, VB, and MB. All right. 
Uh, and then we had to determine what was our concentrated force and its location uh, using this is this is comes from lecture 10 if you need to review uh, uh, distributed loads um, but that's how we were able to determine our concentrated force is magnitude and its location which just occurs at the center of the area of the concentrated force and then we then just applied our equilibrium equations like we've been doing uh, for the uh, past few weeks just to find what the unknown forces NB, VB, and MB are at point B. So we just used our three equations, the sum of the forces in the X, sum of the forces in the Y, and the sum of the forces, uh, and some of the moments about point B. All right. So that concludes this example problem on how to find the internal forces within a member.